Cause we gon' get to the moolah But first we gotta bend the knee Thank God, hallelujah I made it off the block Had to use Yo, my what's up, stream team? It's your man, Warren Freeman A.K.A. Free the Sinner The Independent Hustler And I'm here to give all of you artists The top five things that you need to know In order to start your rap career Number one you need to realize that you are a business, right? You need to get out of your mind. Unless you're doing this for the purpose of it being a hobby, you need to realize that if you want uh, to have a serious career in the music industry as a rapper, you need to realize that one, you're not just a rapper anymore, that you're actually a business. So what this means is you're going to, basically have to shift your thinking, right? You're going to have to start taking your taking your career more serious. This means things like showing up to places on time. This means coming up with a schedule. This means surrounding yourself with like-minded people because you have to realize that as you begin to grow as an artist and you begin to collect different streams of money, there are people out there with influence that's going to have their eye on you. And they're basically looking to see if you're taking your business serious or not. There's people like investors. If you're going the, the major route, there's definitely executives and things of that nature. So you want to make sure that everything you're doing is ethical. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't want to burn any bridges. You don't want to do anything that may hinder or make these influencers or sponsors change their mind about wanting to do business with you. So you definitely want to get into the business mind state. That's going to also require you registering your, 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 your stage name as a business. Number two, you're going to want to educate yourself on the music industry and how it really works, right? A lot of times, uh, art, I see artists, they get into the, 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 the industry with no type of education at all, and they wind up signing contracts, getting into deals that it would have been better if they would have just stayed completely independent. So you wanna, you're wanna you going to want to start uh, educating yourself on the music industry. You're going to want to start to educate yourself on how you can be able to collect money from your music. A lot of artists just think, for example, a lot of artists just think that you just collect money from streams and downloads, and that's not necessarily true. You're supposed to be getting at least four checks off of every stream that your song gets. You know, there's your publishing, you know what I mean? There's uh, your digital royalties, there's mechanical royalties, and things of that nature. So you're going to want to educate yourself and learn exactly where it is that you have to go, what it is that you have to do in order to make sure that you get paid. I have a book out. It's on Amazon for $9.99. If you go to my website, A Thousand Streams, A Thousand Times, and whatever service you purchase there, the book actually comes free. It's called A Thousand Streams, A Thousand Times, and it's a great guide to get uh, you started as an independent rapper. So this way, you know exactly what you need to do as you're stepping forth into your career. Tip number three, you're going to want to have to come up with a stage name. Now, some of you may already have a stage name, but the reason I, I stress this is you don't just want to have any type of stage name. You don't want to just be called little so-and-so or whatever the case may be. You want to make sure that your stage name is unique. And the reason for that being is, one, like I said earlier, you're going to have to register your stage name as a business. So this is what's going to basically identify you whenever uh, new fans or new supporters are basically looking for you. This is pretty much the first thing that they're going to look for. So it has to be something rememberable. So however you may want to spell it a particular way. Um, also, you want to have some type of story attached to it, right? You want And you want the story to be as organic and relatable to you and your brand as possible. This way, whenever a, a new supporter or a fan they start to learn about, okay, why did this artist choose this particular name? Um, and there's a story behind it. 
you get a emotional connection between you and that artist because that story may be a story that they can relate to as well. So they're going to feel a deeper connection to you, a deeper connection to your brand. And you definitely want that. Like I said, unique spelling is also a plus. Um, my artist name is Free the Center. I spell it with two threes. So if you Google me now, all you're going to see on like the first two, three Google search engine pages are Free the Center spelled with the two threes and things like that. So it's 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 organic, it's unique, and nobody I don't have issues with anybody stealing it. So you definitely want to keep that in mind with a stage name. And as I said before, you definitely are gonna to have to register your stage name as your business name. This way you can get tax write-offs and all those great perks that come with that. Number four, you're gonna to need to establish your online presence. So now that you got your stage name, what you're going to do is you're you're definitely going to go to Wix.com or you can use Shopify, somewhere where you can build a, a website, right? Because you're going to need to start to establish your online presence. You're going to need to go to all of the social media platforms and you're going to start a page. So your website all of your social media pages, they're all gonna be named after whatever you choose your stage name to be. So like I said, my stage name is Free the Center, it's spelled with two threes, the spelled with an A. And basically my website, my all of my social media platforms, they all are spelled the same way. And the reason why you're gonna to wanna to do this, like I said, your online presence, when people search you on Google or Yahoo, everything that has that name is going to pop up. So if people only use Twitter, that's going to pop up. If people only use TikTok, that's going to pop up. So that's a great way to establish your online presence. Also, this is a bonus. I would say definitely start a link tree or a smart URL. This way, it's a one-stop shop for people that may come across your page. So like I said, it, it makes it easier for people to find your music. It makes it easier for people to follow you on the social platforms that they want to follow you on and listen to you on whatever digital streaming platforms that they may already have. So that's definitely a bonus for you guys. Number five, and this is probably the most important tip that I'm going to give you outside of registering your stage name as a business. Now, you're going to need to start uh, email list or a texting list. Um, I recommend that you start both because there are a lot of people that use email and there's a lot of people that use text. But I mean, you could weigh it out based on your comfortabilities. A lot of people say, you know, email is dead. A lot you can't really reach people on email, and that's not necessarily true. There's a whole market and a whole demographic of people that literally read their emails every day, just as much as they read their uh, Instagram pages or their TikTok pages. I'm one of them people. I'm constantly scrolling through my email, searching for messages. I have more than one email. So you're basically gonna wanna start up an email. If you don't have an email address specifically for your business, for your music, um, you're gonna wanna start one up. You wanna name it exactly the same as your stage name. Like I said, everything needs to have that stage name. That's why uh, doing a search and taking your due diligence to make sure that that name is not taken and is as unique as possible is highly detrimental to what you're trying to do. So yes, definitely you're going to want to start an email, uh, an email address, professional one specifically for your music and any business that you're going to conduct. Then what you're going to do after that is you're going to sign up to a company called MailChimp. You know what I mean? MailChimp is what I personally use. I love it. And what you're going to do is you're going to just collect emails from people that you know care about your brand. You know what I mean? When you set up your website, you should be able to set up um, a part of the website where people can actually sign up to your email list and you just collect those names. And anytime you have new music, um, a video, a show, um, those people on your email list, you're going to want to shoot that that uh, information to them before anybody else, because one, they're supporting you, right? They should have supported you in some way, whether it was 
uh, buying a, a CD, streaming your music, shouting you out. However way they support you, you want to collect them, add them to that email list. And don't spam them. Don't email them every way, every day because that's a way you could get blocked and people will unsubscribe. You definitely want to build a healthy relationship, you know what I'm saying, with you and your supporters, maybe like once a week, maybe once every two weeks, once every month, whatever works for you and you knowing your supporters best as, best as you, you should. That's um, a, a great way to up sales and to, to scale your music business. Um, texting, text list is also great because we live in a day where people are always on their phone. So the same way that you would collect emails is the same way you will collect um, numbers for your text list. You know what I mean, put put it on your uh, your website where you could collect numbers from people that are actually interested in you and in, in your music and what you do. And they want to support you somehow. Let them know, yo, I, I, I would love to collect your number, not to spam you, not to call you and send crazy pictures or nothing like that, but just to keep you in the loop of what's going on with me and my brand and my music. And um, you can offer free incentives too for people that sign up. You can say, hey, if you sign up, you get an unreleased song that I'm not going to release to anybody. You'll have access to merch, you give away free, free merch, whatever it is to kind of make those people feel extra, extra special by just joining up to your your email list or your text list. So you definitely want to do that. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's pretty much the top five tips that I have for uh, rappers out there that are basically starting out. Um, make sure you like and you subscribe to my channel if you love the content. I mean, we're basically trying to just help independent artists out there and keep you guys from being taken advantage of by the wolves. So that's why I'm doing this. You know what I'm saying? So make sure you guys support, like, subscribe, donate to the channel, and uh, also check out some of my music. You know what I'm saying? I'm Free the Center, a.k.a. Warren the Goat, the independent hustler. I'm out of here. Peace. We gon' get to the moolah, but first we gotta bend the knee. Thank God, hallelujah. I made it off the block, had to use.